Hello, everybody. We are here at the Billmore Hotel with the one and only Miss Maggie Munoz from MT International Realty. And she's going to talk to us about this amazing event that's going on about investing in Portugal. But she's going to tell us all about it right now. Miss Munoz, tell us everything. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And welcome. Welcome, everybody. My name is Maggie Munoz. I'm CEO broker of MTM International Realty. I've been in the real estate business for 30 years here in Miami as a high-end broker. And uh, now, um, basically, we're doing this incredible event, which is live and invest in Portugal. Awesome. Why Portugal? Portugal. Yes, please tell us about that because it's very interesting that you choose in Portugal and we want to know exactly the reason why. Please tell us, Ms. Munoz. Since I've been in the tourism industry prior to real estate, I was the vice president of tourism for Miami-Dade County, I thought that in order to offer real estate clients different options is to offer them a beautiful country, which is Portugal. So why Portugal? Portugal is a unique country. It's a small country, it's 10 million inhabitants, but it, has, it encompasses everything. It has 560 miles of pristine beaches and cliff. It has mountains for skiing. It has great gastronomy, uh, metal wines all over uh, in Douro Valley and Alentejo. Mm -hmm. It also has beautiful cosmopolitan cities like Lisbon, Cascais, Porto, and many other ones. Of course, we have the famous Shrine of Fatima, which is Portugal, and I'm sure everybody knows yes. that. Uh, so it is to me a pleasure to be able to promote this wonderful country and be able to offer this to the Americans, especially retirees and everybody who are trying to find a better lifestyle, quality of life, which is what everybody right now is looking for, and also low cost of living and fresh food, great people, everybody speaks English there, and such a beautiful country that offers so many things. We have, they have great health care, um, low medicine costs, which is very important, yes. great mm -hmm. tra free transportation system throughout the country. We have two major airports, the Lisbon Airport and the Porto Airport, and then one in the Algarve area, which is the Faro Airport. Mm -hmm. So you That's can enjoy thing. basically everything. It offers everything. And then the best thing is our neighbors are España. España, you ole. <laughs> but Ms. Muñoz, I really want to know, like, how can people contact you? How can they go about and, and doing this an amazing investment? Because I heard so much about the wine. Oh, my yes. God. And, I, and I'm a wine lover. <laughs> so please tell us, like, even people like young like me in the 40s, uh, what, what can we do to, like, uh, go ahead and do this an amazing investment and, and, and get started right away? Well, the best thing is, right now, there are a lot of different um, ways that you can. Like, we have visas that are being given to the nomads. That's amazing. Which is very, right now, Lisbon mm -hmm. is considered the capital of the nomads. Oh, wow. So, it's a, a fantastic thing. That's good to know. And then, of course, you have the benefits of other visas and investment, which, even if you don't need to get residency, you can mm. still buy it and rent them out. And the best thing is that it's really, the prices is way less than right now here in Miami. That's very important about the, like, the residency and all that stuff. And I was exactly. going to ask you about that. Exactly. that's something that they, people got to know because they don't have to worry about it, you know. And not only so. that, interest mm -hmm. rates right there are way less than they are right Ooh, now in okay. the United States, okay. which is something very attractive okay. for anybody who doesn't have the cash to invest over there. Awesome. But uh, like I said, if you're looking for a great quality of life, if you're looking for low cost of living, if you're looking for fresh food, gastronomical delights, wonderful wines, great people, an amazing culture, which has been around for many years, is one of the oldest yes, countries in Europe, yes. and it's very friendly, yes. I think this is your choice to invest in Portugal. Amazing, and she said it all. But again, I want you to tell me exactly what I got some information here where they should contact you at um, the website and uh, Facebook Maggie Munoz, uh, Facebook also Maggie Munoz, um, 
uh, luxury properties. And we're going to give you more information about that throughout the whole uh, broadcast. But uh, Maggie, thank you so much for being with us. And we're going to stay here the whole thank afternoon. So and I'm so excited. And we're going to Portugal. Obrigado. So uh, stay in contact, you guys, because this is going to be amazing. Thank you so much, Ms. Munoz. Amazing. Thank you, thank you so much. Obrigada. Obrigada. <laughs> amazing. Thank you so much. See you guys. from MCM International Realty. I've been a realtor in Miami for 30 years, uh, so I'm, I'm very knowledgeable of that market here. I was also Vice President of Tourism for the Greater Miami Convention and Visitors Bureau for many years. I was Vice President for Coldwell Bankers and also worked on Sotheby's International. So my real estate background is quite immense. Why am I here? Why Portugal? Portugal is an incredible country right now. It offers, number one, an amazing lifestyle, and that's what everybody's actually looking for. Low cost of living, great health care, low cost medical medicines, great free transportation system. You have the cosmopolitan cities of Lisbon, Porto, and many others, and then you have 560 miles of pristine beaches and cliffs in the Algarve area. And then you also have beautiful mountains for skiing, which is actually something nobody knows about Portugal. But you have Sela de Estrela, which is up north near Porto, which is fantastic ski resort. You also have the wonderful island of Madeira. That's where you have the Madeira wine. And the most beautiful islands of the Azores which are only four hours from New York, so right in the middle of the Atlantic. So Portugal, in being a small country, a population of approximately 10 million people, you have all these wonderful things. You have the best people, friendly, who speak English, and you can get the best food, fresh food, believe me. You can go to a little beach restaurant, all right? or to a Michelin star restaurant, which are many in Lisbon, Cascais, and Porto. So, and the, the Portuguese chefs are becoming world renowned. So it's something is fantastic. So my idea here is to present this to you. I want to be your guide. I want to be your point person here in Miami for any of your real estate needs as far as Portugal is concerned, or for that matter, any need, because a lot of my friends who are here today, they call me and when they go, they say, what restaurant should we go to? What should we do? So I'm basically like a guide of Portugal. And I really enjoy it because for me, it means a lot. I started this project prior to the pandemic, okay? I wanted to do this. And unfortunately, like everything, I had to put it on hold. But now today, I see my dream is coming true. And I thank you all not only our great sponsors who have come all the way from Portugal to be here today, but I thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now, before my time runs out, because everything is time, I am going to introduce our first speaker here, which is Carolina Rendeiro, who is the Honorary Consul of Portugal. So, so good afternoon to the afternoon audience we have today. I was here this morning and we had a great crowd as well. Um, I'm just here to welcome you on behalf of the uh, Portuguese government, uh, which I represent here in the state of Florida. And we have 42,000 Portuguese living here in this state, which people are really, really shocked to hear because we're well hidden, but in this region, in the south, um, in, in what we call our tri-county area, we have anywhere between 9,000 to 11,000. But just to tell you a little bit about what we do here is that we work with the Caribbean. So the Caribbean all comes to Miami for passport renewals, anything that they need. Uh, we're also starting to see a lot of um, businesses coming to Miami from Portugal, which I think is uh, very interesting because that never really happened in South Florida. It happened in Boston. It happened in New Jersey. Uh, but in the New York area, and of course, in California. But 
we were not uh, that privy down here to be getting those people. Uh, so now we're starting to see in cybersecurity and other and other types of industries that we're starting to see come from Portugal here to Miami. But what I really want to touch base is why do they want to come to Miami? Well, that has to do with the tourism too that Portugal uh, experienced over the last seven to ten years. We saw quite a bit of tourism in Portugal, which really opened the eyes of a lot of uh, Americans to realizing that Portugal was its own country. We were not part of Spain, okay? So we do have our own country and our own language, and uh, we're very close to Spain. But we, um, it, it really opened up, and, and then that opportunity, some companies really grasped onto it, and then the quality of life was good, and of course real estate started booming, and and we were seeing the results, you know. So I think that is a positive spin on it, and I'm I'm, I'm delighted to see all of you here. I don't know how many have been to Portugal that are in this room, okay? Oh, good. We're very happy about that, okay? <laughs> keep on going, you know, keep on buying, and uh, we'll be happy here. But it is a beautiful country, it's a safe country. Um, your retirement dollars do go farther. I mean, I am also uh, retired already, and I can tell you that uh, I couldn't live here on my retirement and pension, the comfortable life that I have there. So I think it's very important that you know you keep that in mind when you're looking at investing in Portugal. It's a safe place to invest. People are friendly. The streets are, are, are safe. We don't have to worry about you know anything drastic like we worry about here sometimes. So uh, I welcome all of you to, if you haven't been to Portugal to visit, if you plan on investing, look at the possibilities you have there to invest. I encourage you to meet with our sponsors that are here today. I think um, they come to ask the questions. They have great answers, they're accurate answers. And, um, and I always encourage people to, when you're looking to move to another country, really engage with somebody that lives there, that knows the, the rulings and the laws and, and helps you, guide you through that process. So. Uh, we welcome you in Portugal. In Portugal, we have a saying that recebemos de braços abertos, okay? So we welcome you with open arms to Portugal, and we look forward to having you there and investing in Portugal. Thank you. Thank you, Carolina. Thank you. So now I am going to present our prestigious sponsors. Prestigious sponsors. Yes, they are. And we start with Patricia Viana from Abreu Avogados. So here's Patricia, come on. I'm Lynn Alexandra. Um, I'm a real estate partner at Abreu Advogados, which is a, a Portuguese law firm. Uh, and Alexandra is a, a tax partner at, at the firm, so we are here to hopefully answer all your questions about how to invest in Portugal, how to pay taxes, if any, um, and, and what type of visas will enable you to, to actually move to Portugal. So let's, let's start. Let's, let's see if this works. Let's see if this works. Yes. Okay. So, Alexandra, taking the floor. Okay. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure being here today. We hope to take advantage of um, everything that we have to say. Uh, bear in mind that uh, the slides have a lot of information. We don't have time to go through everything. So if you want to know more, just reach us when we are on the one-to-one -one meeting, okay? So investing in Portugal. Um, we thought that it would be interesting to speak not, not only in terms of investing, but also living in Portugal. So first thing, Starting by the investing, if you want to invest in Portuguese uh, real estate, how should you do it? The first thing that you need to think about is, do you want to invest uh, individually or do you want to invest through a company? If you want to invest individually, it's easy, get a Portuguese tax number and that's it. If you want to invest through a company, you can use one that you already have or you can incorporate a company in Portugal, which is a straightforward process, okay? Now, and then you want to really acquire the property. So Patricia, how to acquire a property? So let's, okay. Now, first idea that you need to, to, 
take with you what, two ideas. First, anyone, everyone can buy pro uh, properties in Portugal. You don't need to be a citizen. You don't need to be a resident. You can buy even without a visa. Um, second, this is a, a very safe procedure. It's not that red tape. Um, it's pretty easy and very um, and very safe, as I as I said. So, and, and why? Basically, all properties in Portugal are registered at the land registry office and at the tax authorities. Uh, this is relevant because it gives you an idea of the history of the property. It is very easily accessed online, and you can check if the property has encumbrances, charges, if it's pledged, what are the areas of the property, what is really relevant about the thing that you're buying, um, where are the taxes that are applicable, which I will then explain how how to calculate the taxes that you'll be paying. And of course, all the properties in Portugal are licensed by the municipality, construction-wise and use. Um, they are not licensed if they were built before 1951, but they are, if they are relatively new, they are all licensed, so then again, very safe to buy. Energy certification, it's, it has to do with the energy performance of the real estate, which is something that's been, um, People find it to be very relevant nowadays, and everything you buy needs to be to have this energy certificate. The certification. So, how to do it? Um, easily done. First, you need to obtain a Portuguese tax number. If you are a non-resident, you need to to have a tax representative here in in Portugal. You have to open a bank account in Portugal. Sometimes that's the mm, the thing that takes you more time due to compliance reasons of the banks, um, then this is not mandatory, but usually you will be required to sign a reservation agreement, often refundable, and just to take the property out of the market, you usually are asked to pay 10,000 euros, and then you'd start the due diligence process and the negotiation of the permissory purchase and sale agreement. Permissory purchase and sale agreement wise, it's usually requested a down payment of around 20% of the purchase price. The deed of purchase, which is actually the title of acquisition, is signed between a pub, uh, before a public notary. And again, this idea of safeness. And your acquisition will later on be registered not only at the tax authorities, but also before the land registration office. And taxes. Yeah, so you, if you are buying in Portugal, uh, you need to think about two taxes that need to be by, paid on acquisition. Real estate transfer tax, the, there are different tax rates, but the top uh, tax rate above 1 million is 7.5%. 7 and then you have stamp duty, which is 0.8%. This is what you basically will be dealing with if you are acquiring a property. After acquisition, of course, you will be the owner of the property, and in that moment in time, there are also uh, taxes that you pay. Annually, you pay real estate tax, which is a municipal tax, that, in which uh, tax rate ranges from 0.3% to 0.45% over the tax value of the property, which is not the market value, okay? It's lower than that. Then, for properties uh, above 1.2 million, you can have an additional to the real estate tax, which is also progressive de depending on the amount of, the, the, of the, 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 the value of the house, the tax value of the house, okay? This is basically the, the taxes that you will need to deal with when you are acquiring property. And then of course, um, then of course, you will have uh, you, you will need to take the decision if you want to explore um, the, the investment that you did, so the house that you bought. Uh, and in that case, if you are um, uh, if you acquire directly, then you will have rental income, and these will be taxed at the 28% tax rate. If you use the company, then depends. If you use a non-resident company, you would be looking into a 25% tax rate. If you use a local company, this would be 21%, but uh, it could be lower for the first uh, 50K. It's basically this. Now, Patricia will go in to tell us a little bit about the visas. I think we're sounding like we're on a rush. <laughs> Are we moving too fast? 
No? Okay. A, a bit? Yeah, sorry. A lot of information in, in 20 minutes. Okay, um, talking about visas, uh, if you want to either move into Portugal or to get a, a, a visa that enables you to enter Portugal whenever you want to stay, or whatever time you, you want to stay and actually move to opt through other Schengen uh, countries in Europe, of course you will need to obtain a visa for that purpose. The most, uh, you know, uh, uh, the famous one is the Golden Visa, which I'm sure you have heard about. Golden Visa is a type of visa that is based on investment, so bringing funds to, to the, the, bringing money to Portugal. So by bringing money to Portugal, you will be eligible to obtain a visa that will enable you to uh, access healthcare, access education, live in Portugal and travel throughout the Schengen area. What is good about this visa? This, this visa became hugely popular because though you will have a resident card or a residency card, you will not be obligated, it's not mandatory to actually live in the country. You just need to stay there seven days per year, which is fantastic if you don't want to, you know, to actually immigrate to another, to another country. Um, requirements for a golden visa. The funds towards the acquisition or towards the investment must come from abroad. Uh, you need to enter Portugal with a valid Schengen visa. You, you cannot have your name referenced in the Schengen police and you cannot have been convicted of a fel felony uh, or a crime punishable with more than one year pr imprisonment. There is the minimum permanence in Portugal. And this is very relevant because some of you have dual citizenship. If you have, if you are a citizen of a European Union country or Schengen area country, you cannot apply to, to, to the Golden Visa because you can't freely live in Portugal, of course. Now, uh, there are quite a lot of types of investments that are eligible for visa purposes. I just took, I just chose one, the two because there are, well, I would say 90 to 95% of the golden visas that have been granted in Portugal were granted due to the investment either in real estate or in venture capital funds, which Joe will explain you later on. How is the acquisition in real estate relevant for golden visa purposes or, or what type of investments are eligible, direct or indirect through a company? Uh, acquisition of an apartment already built or already being able to be used, and the threshold here is half a million euros. Note, you cannot buy an apartment or a house in Lisbon, in Port, and in the coastal area that is licensed for residential purposes. It must be for services, a store, a warehouse, a touristic unit, whatever, but not an habitation. Uh, then there, are a, a, another, there is a t another type of investment which is also eligible, and the threshold here is well, uh, much less, which is 350,000 euros, and it goes like buying a house and doing refurbishment works. Uh, and the combination of the price of the house with the price of, price of the construction or refurbishment works equals 350,000 euros, therefore becoming eligible for golden visa purposes. If the investment is done in a low populated area of the country, which there are quite a few, uh, then the thresholds will be reducing 20%. Then, venture capital funds. Uh, I'm not going to speak a lot about this because Diogo will, but you, ne you need to have an investment of at least 500,000 euros. And this is golden visa wise. Uh, not sure if you heard the news, but the Portuguese government wants to close the, the, the program. Some pressures from the European Union and some social pressures in Portugal due to the lack of habitation for Portuguese nationals to live in. Uh, and there were some news uh, by the Portuguese government that they want to close the, the, the program. We're not sure when it's going to happen. Uh, other changes in the program that the government enacted last year, uh, they were given sort of a probation period of one year to become actually uh, uh, valid and in force. If this will be the case, and if you're really interested in obtaining a golden visa, I would say that this is the moment to start the procedure. 
we will know, I would say, in a couple of weeks, when will the program end, uh, for sure. And, but I'm, I'm positive that we will have until the end of the year to, 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 to handle this. I'm not going to speak a lot about other visas, but at least not thoroughly, but there are at least three types of visas that you may consider as well. The entrepreneur visa, if you want to start a business in Portugal, if you want to incorporate a company in Portugal, then the D2 would be your visa. Uh, the passive income uh, or retirement visa will be the D7. If you have a source of income which is you know, paid on a monthly basis, generated on a monthly or bi-monthly basis, uh, and you want to actually retire or move to Portugal, the D7 will be the case. And then the digital nomad, which means that if you have an employment agreement here in the US, but you want to actually work abroad, for that US company, you can move to Portugal, become a resident in Portugal, and use this digital nomad visa. Relevant distinction between golden visa and these three types of visas. Well, the golden, golden visa do, doesn't demand that you leave in Portugal for more than seven days a year, which is nothing, it's a holiday. Uh, these visas demand that you actually move there, so you need to be eight months in Portugal throughout the year. So it's an actual move to Portugal. Um, we will make this presentation available to you, and there's a, a lot of explanation about the visas, but I will leave it in the, in the PowerPoint presentation, I'll text this again. Okay, let me just pass this on and tell you that now that you already got a visa, you are prepared to move to Portugal, okay? So the next thing that you need to think of is how will I be taxed? I, I'm sure all of you think about that. Now, first thing you already know, the criteria in Portugal is more or less the same as everywhere. If you spend at least 183 days in Portugal, you are the Portuguese tax resident in that respect, okay? So you need to register, and because of that, after registering, you will be subject to worldwide taxation. In order to try to prevent double taxation, we have the non-habitual tax resident regime that guarantees some tax benefits for someone uh, registering and applying to the status, okay? To register, uh, the requirements are very simple. You should move to Portugal, which you already decide to do, and you could not have been tax resident in Portugal for the last five years. And that's it. This in enables you to register as a Portuguese tax resident, benefiting from the non-habitual tax resident regime. The process in itself is self-explanatory, is really uh, fast. The application is then online, and nowadays we have an answer really, really, really fast. So now that you already have the status, how will you be taxed in the different type of income that you earn? Um, it depends basically um, of the type of income that you have. Uh, and I'm going to summarize um, that. Basically, in terms of uh, Portuguese source income that derives from an employment or from a self-employed position, like an, uh, being a consultant or something like that, uh, the taxation, if you qualify under a value-added affiliate like journalists, directors, this type of functions, you can benefit from a 20% flat rate by opposition to the 48% progressive tax rate that we apply to people like myself and Patricia. Then, if you are receiving pension income, these are also good news because the tax rate is 10%. In respect to foreign source income, it's also very interesting because dividends, rights, interests, they are exempt in Portugal. So as you can see, this can be a very, very interesting tax regime um, that you can benefit in Portugal. Also, other things to keep in mind, and these are also good news, we don't have wealth tax in Portugal and we don't have inheritance tax, okay? We have stamp duty but it's only on assets located in Portugal, and there is an exemption for the direct family, so spouses, uh, children, and so on. So basically, we are looking into a very, very uh, interesting situation, also from a tax perspective, in terms of uh, estate planning and so on. So this is basically what we wanted to share with you. We are now available to 
answer some immediate questions and of course ready to answer to all your questions on a one-to-one -one meetings, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies. So we move on. Our next fabulous uh, sponsor is Diogo Ferreira from Atlanticor. So, no, do you have any questions for the ladies? Because Anybody? you were so clear. Anybody <laughs> about what they spoke about? Everything's so clear. So yeah. clear. Everything is very clear. Oh my gosh. All right, well, anyway, they will be here later on. In case you think of something, they will be upstairs in uh, breakouts and tables, and you can join them, and you can actually talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. So, Diogo, it's all yours. Thank you. Hi, people. It is very strange not to have questions about taxes. Something is wrong. You don't have money, guys, I understand now. You can ask later, <laughs> no worries. Sorry, let me let me check if my presentation is here. Is there anyone who can help me? I don't know how to delete this this thing. Oh, okay. Yes? No, no, this is the, the previous one. Well, while they are taking care of the technology, let me just tell you two or three things. Um, it is strange for me to be talking in, in America about, about Portugal. I, was, um, I came here when I was 18. I lived three months in a family, and on those days, Portugal was a, a real, real poor country. I remember my family on, the, on that summertime, it was upstate New York in a small city called Oswego, they, they gave me $50 because it, Portugal was very poor and they keep me giving me the $50 for Christmas time until I was 38. So they, they thought I was, <laughs> it was a real poor country. And uh, I remember on, on those days that um, everyone, they were not sure where Portugal was. Portugal was, for most of those Americans on those days, was a province of Spain and a lot of things changed. And the thing is, how did we get here so fast and what happened to make all these changes. By 2009, with the crisis, Portugal was in, in deep problem, not to say deep shit. And um, the banks, they were, they were broke, the country was broke, and um, there was a, a lot of unemployment. The Americans, they didn't know anything about Portugal. The tourism in Portugal just felt apart. It was our uh, most important wealth and, and uh, industry. And it was amazing how for two years or three years until 2013, people that were unemployed, they start creating new business. The low costs start flying to Portugal. We create the golden visa. We create the, some fiscal attractions. Portugal becomes more known. Portugal became, because it was cheaper, more fashionable. We start coming into the news, TAP and some other companies open uh, routes to other countries and America, and suddenly Portugal becomes very trendy. It's the safest country, it's the cheapest to live, it is this and this is that. The very, the very successful program of the Golden Visa, which was originally created by 2000, 2012, and the reason of that Golden Visa was to attract, can you imagine, Russians. I was involved on that in 2011, and that's the goal of it was to try to attract Russians to invest money in Portugal. And sometimes, like most of you that are involved in companies, sometimes we make some proposals and, and the final outcome is not what we expect. I suggest to, well, the, the association I was sharing proposed to the government to create a goal of it to attract Russians. On that same year, the rubble came down for 40%. On that same year, China, they closed 50% of the, of the share of the Chinese market to come to live in America and Chinese discover Portugal, and Portugal becomes very trendy for the Chinese, and Chinese start buying property. That was it. And then, the government see, watch something very interesting, was a lot of international people were buying property, but unfortunately, because the, 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 the Portuguese developers, they were broke, they couldn't afford to produce more houses. So what happened is that a lot of people buying new property, 
but there were no, no, there were no more property. So what happened with the prices? The prices start to climb. So people were investing and in, 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 in getting money out of it. So the, people, the, the, the world of mount start to say it's a good place to invest money. And so that scams and, and the, the, the things continue to grow. And then it happens two years ago that the government says, guys, we have a problem. Now the Portuguese cannot afford anymore to buy property in Portugal. They are too expensive. Yeah, but we are not responsible. You guys attract all the investors, but you didn't make the conditions for the people to build houses. And so they produced that fantastic system of saying, now you cannot buy the golden visa buying property in Lisbon, Porto, and the Algarve. Come on, the golden visa is just a thousand per year. People. And now they decide to stop with the golden visa. So what, what's the sense of that? In fact, what I have to say is this, if there was not the golden visa, if it was not the fiscal things, the price will go up because there's no, there no new houses. That's a bit just to understand a bit of the market in Portugal and what's happened. Because everyone who is informed and wants to think about investing, it is very important to know what are the basics of the economy of a certain country. Portugal, fortunately, on the last years we have been stabilized. So in 2009 we were in really deep problem. And, um, sorry, this is not working. Don't talk, I can talk good things, but not continuously. No, it's okay. Thank you. So, Portugal now is, is stabilizing most of the important numbers. So this is the, 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 the national debt was something very, very hard for Portugal. We have a number that was roughly 130% of the, of the debt in Portugal. And we are declining, and we go to 97%, which is on the top, on the best list of Europe. And the national debt is decreasing, national budget is controlled, the GDP is growing on the European levels, unemployment is steady, and Portuguese tourism is growing. These are key factors to understand what is the expectations for the future. And whatever you know, when when you see that last year, that the largest investment by far is these yellow guys, and the yellow guys are. USA, you understand that it's a stable country to invest. The Americans, they're always concerned about the outlook and the trends. So this was last year. This is the forecast to expect, and the expect of the residential, despite everything else, growing interest from the North Americans, and the price record breaking, but it's still growing. Why? Because the prices, there is no way to put it down. There are no new houses to offer. So it's continued to be a, 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 place, a place to think of investing. Portugal tourism this year will surpass the best numbers ever in 2023. So I would say that it's very positive, the, the, the trend for the future. Everyone likes about rankings. We also like about rankings. And we are on the top rankings in a lot of things. If someone likes to surf, we have this small wave for some of you. It's better to, to wear some of those things for, for the arms. And you have beautiful beaches and you have a very safe and you have fantastic ratings. And if you see in terms of these expat rankings, you are in the top five of most of the things. This is very important besides all the economic things. These are things that people, they care about. People they care about, easy to settle in, to be friendless, to speak languages, to find friends, culture. These are simple things that when the people think of moving or think of having a second house or think of investing, they like to understand how it is. Because it's very easy to show economic numbers, but this is something that they give them a kind of good expectations for the future. As it was explained before, there's a, for the golden visa, and I, I explained before, some one and a half years ago stop, the government stopped with the golden visa. Um, people to get the golden visa could buy property, but no longer in the big, the big cities. So we knew that the big investors, they don't like to, to, to buy property in the middle of nowhere. So we created this fund, which is a venture capital fund, which is a good alternative for investment. Just a, 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 a certain explanation. Sometimes we, we forget to explain some details. When you say about the golden visa to give free access to Schengen, Schengen, for the people who might not know the detail, <coughs> is a space in, in Europe with 27 countries where it's free circulation of money, capital, and employment. 
So meaning that everyone who gets a, a visa for one of each of these countries can freely travel all over these 27 countries, work, transfer money, and do whatever. The, so a Portuguese guy with a golden visa can do exactly the same in France, in Germany, and no longer in the UK. Um, so this is important. So when the government decided that it's no longer possible to buy property in Lisbon, Porto, and the Algarve to get the golden visa, then it came to this, this, this solution. And this solution of the venture capital fund, it goes out of the two most important and most successful things in Portugal. One is to invest in tourism, second is to invest in residential, and all together we create a fund that we exclusively invest in private locations and exclusively on branded luxury hotels and branded luxury residential. So by this principle, what we expect to deliver is the following. We invest 500,000. By investing 500,000, we hope to deliver to the investors an average IRR around 8% per year. So if we just can deliver after six years, you will get in principle, if you put 500,000, you'll get 750. And it's free of taxes in Portugal. Well, if you are an American citizen and if you are an American payer taxes in, in America, obviously you have them to pay here. But you are, if you are no longer there and if you want to live in Portugal and to become a, a Portuguese citizenship and to have a passport, then you are free of taxes. And this is a huge advantage. And so we created this. There is a, it's today the most, the most, uh, the most uh, popular alternative for serious investors. Obviously, if I go to China, they don't understand this because they just like property. But when we talk about people who are serious investors and they are investing for years, they say, well, if I want just to have a golden visa way enables me to get a second option in a country in Europe that I can fly or drive away. And if I just need to spend seven days, I prefer not to have a house, but to invest in a place where I can get some return and I diversify my, my investments and my risk is minimum. So when you create this, we get the founding members are some of the most credible developers. I will show you some of the projects that we have been delivered on the last years in Portugal. Links, the fund manager, is one of the leading fund managers, and all this fund is supervised by CFBM, it's Josef. It's, so it's the regulator of Portugal that obliged uh, uh, full regulation, obliged to send reports. It's a lot of serious things. You have a registration official, so it's something like you are in America investing in a, in a financial uh, place. So what we are going to do is basically not to do the, the shit again in, in, in Istanbul, but something like using the, the, the very good brands, hotel brands, and we have two, two options. One is for the people just looking for the golden visa that have to invest a minimum of 500,000, and we hope to deliver eight to nine IRR every year, or for larger investors, we, we then give a higher return because we give a part of our success fee. We, as founding members, we decided to bring to the fund most of our largest projects, and the reason is because we have large projects that we cannot afford to go just by ourselves. So we bring to the fund, we were investing two and a half millions in the beginning, and we just get a success fee in the end. So what we're saying is that for individuals, we give 50% of the profits of the fund. For the large investors, we give 85% of, of investments. And so we are totally aligned with the investors. If, if the final outcome of this fund is lower than 30%, and I will explain you why, we have a zero success fee. So we were working for seven years for free, which is something understandable. These are the two, some of the, the founding members, and these are the projects that we, we have been doing in, in Lisbon on the last years. If you know Lisbon, that's Hotel by Mualto. This is the Intercontinental in Porto. This is Estoril Sol. All these were projects developed by our founding members. <clears throat> this is the structure of the fund, so the fund works as a venture capital. It has a kind of like a holding here, and the holding, they have participations in companies that own different projects. In order, again, to diversify and to reduce risk, we never have 100% on each of these SPVs. We have just between 30 and 50%, but we are always in control. There is the links, which is the fund manager to control this, and then the subscribers will put the money here, and then the money flows to the companies. These companies, they pay uh, company taxes. This company is free of company taxes and free of dividends. 
This is just a comparison, a simple comparison between buying a property or buying a fund. Because you, st you still can buy a property and have the golden visa. You have to buy it away from the money city. So the, the, the main difference is this. Think that in, in, both, in both cases you invest half a million euros, and in both cases you sell it after five years for 750. When you have a property, you pay taxes on the acquisition, you have maintenance costs, these two together are 100,000 costs. When you sell for 750, you pay add value tax. So in the end you have this as net. If you buy a fund, you pay this, like the others, you invest 500,000, you have 1,000 entrance fee, you have zero taxes, zero costs, zero maintenance, all along the period, you sell for 750, and you have 749,000 free in the end. This is very simple to, to understand. It's not just more profitable, but in my opinion, is by far more clever. Um, so again, what are the benefits it was explained? So you have to stay a minimum of seven days, and in here, you, after five years, you are eligible to get the, the Portuguese passport. Just this explanation. We just invested in products, in projects that expect a minimum of 16% IRR, each individual project. So remember, we have companies. Each company should deliver this after taxes. What is forecast is that the fund is paying 2% to the fund manager, and we spend two and a half percent as a preferred dividends to the investors. So when you take this from, from this amount of return, you have 11.5 percent. What is said, the regulation, is that for small investors, they get 50 percent of this result, which is 575. But because we are paying two and a half percent, they get 575 plus 2.5, you get 825. When it's larger investors with money over more than 5 million, we give 85%. So the, 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 the founding members are getting less, but we are having more serious investors. On that case, they get the 2.5 plus 975 is 1227. This is our expectations. Just for you to have an idea, this is our first investment. This first investment is on the coast and one of the best locations in Portugal. We made the financial model we hope to have one and a half, one year ago, we expect to have some 16 to 17 IRR. We put it for sale, well, not for sale, for reservation, the apartments here. And instead of selling for 16 or 15, we sold, or we have a reservation for almost 95% for 21,000 euros per square meter, which is an amazing price. Means that this project might go to 17, 18, or even more percent of return. So this is a typical project, what we are going to do. This is an old four-star timeshare hotel. We are going to transform, the first three levels are going to be a five-star hotel. The remaining are going to be luxury residences. We are going to have branded and we get involved. And this is, sorry. This is that awful building. This is going, how it's going to look like. So we hired Philip Stark, Philip Stark, sorry, not Stark, <laughs> Philip Stark, the <laughs> famous interior designer from France. This was the thing that we just showed to some of our investors, and this is what they, they invested. The location of this project, just for the people who are not that much familiar, I know a lot of you have been there. So Portugal, Spain, Lisbon is in the middle, so Porto is here, Lisbon in the Algarve. In Lisbon, this project is on the coast, in, in Eden Hotel, on the bay. For someone, for the people who doesn't know, the Estoril, the Estoril is a fantastic area close by Lisbon which was a very trendy because after the Second World War, well, during the, world, the, the Second World War, Portugal was a neutral country. So a lot of spies went to Lisbon. Do you remember Casablanca? Casablanca, the people were flying from Casablanca to Lisbon to get the flight went to, to America. And so Lisbon was a center of espionage. Estoril, they have two famous hotels, one for the Germans, one for the English. And one of the, of the English, there was already the casino of Estoril, and on, on the hotel of the English, there was a guy, a, 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 a captain, of the, of the British Army, it's called Jan Fleming. And that guy invented a, 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 new, a new guy that's called James Bond. The Casino Royale film, it's actually the Casino Studio. So everything about James Bond starts by there. From that moment, this becomes very trendy, and all the kings and queens that they were, 
they took it away their, their kingdoms in Europe after the Second World War. They went to Portugal and they went to West Rio to live. So that's why this place is so expensive and so unique. And so basically what we are doing is we start with these assets and the next assets we are going to invest in is assets like this one. So five-star luxury branded hotels and residential. So again, why to invest in Portugal? Because and in this country, in this fund, we are putting the best of Portugal together. One is tourism, the other one is real estate, and all together with some of the most credible developers, and we are investing our money, our know-how, and getting a success fee if there is a success. So I hope you enjoy. I hope you can invest in here. This fund is eligible for Golden Visa, and we have to have the fundraising until September this year. So after September, you are no longer possible to invest in this fund. Thank you very much. I hope I was clear. I don't know if you, if you have any questions. I'll be more than happy to answer or to clarify any doubts you might have. Yes, please. Uh, how are you accounting for the raising uh, rates? The How are you accounting for the raising rates in Portugal in regards to the real estate investment there? Well, we have today, we have an increase of 2%. We, we start these financial models with the 3% interest rates. We are considering now 5% for the next two to three years, and then a reduction to 4% and 3.5%. That's what we are considering our model. And I think we are being conservative because of the, the rates in Europe, they are not as high as in America. But in Portugal today, they are still in 3%. But they were pretty much a zero before, right? Yeah, that's the Euro. But if you, go to, if you go to buy a house, if you, are, if you have a long shot loan, then you can have almost 1%. If it's my kid, you will pay probably half percent. But now it's already increased by one to one and a half percent. But for companies, we were paying two and a half. We had some loans for this one. We had a loan for two and a half some one year ago. Mm, they are talking now of increasing to 325. Okay. It's not going to be relevant because we are using a 50-50% equity and the edges financing part of the construction. And because of the pre-sales we have, all the pre-sales are going to reduce the, the loan. Okay. Thank you. Here. More questions? No questions. Okay. I'll be, I'll be over here and up there if you want to talk with me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Diogo. We've got a great next sponsor, which is Brian Bernal from Currencies Direct. So, Brian. Thank you, Maggie. How's everybody doing? Good. I see some familiar faces. We were chatting earlier today, so uh, that's, that's fantastic. That's great. Let me get situated here. Perfect. So yeah, I'm, I'm Brian Burnell. I'm the Director of Business Development uh, for Currencies Direct here in the U.S. Um, got some great things to share with you uh, today. Uh, we're going to be covering over quite a, uh, quite a few things. Not too much, but just some really good pieces that you can take with you uh, when you're uh, looking at making any uh, transfers over to, to Europe to complete on, on any, any, any of these projects, really. Um, what we'll go over, we'll do an introduction to Currencies Direct, a uh, quick plug for, for the company. We will go over the Euro US dollar, histor historical rates of what they were, and we'll kind of dive in to see what they could potentially be, some of our, our, our forecasts. We'll look at the benefits of utilizing a foreign exchange provider. We'll also look at exposing the hidden costs of foreign exchange. Uh, and we'll wrap everything up with a few examples and tools that are available to everyone to, uh, to take advantage and, uh, and capitalize on. 
So a bit about Currencies Direct. We were established in 1996. Um, we've got a team of over 550 currency experts that are strategically placed around the globe. We are in areas where a lot of customers are buying and selling property. So for example, I sit in the office here in Orlando, Florida. Um, there have been a large, there, over the years there's been a large influx of um, foreign national investors coming to the state of Florida and various parts of the U.S. But likewise, we have offices in, uh, in Portugal um, and various places where customers are, are interested in, in getting uh, in, involved. Um, we do have a trust, tr I'm sorry, trust pilot rating that is a five-star rating, something that we're very proud of, and that's over from 50,000 uh, unique reviews, something that we are extremely proud of. Um, hundreds of thousands of customers per year we do take on, uh, and uh, last year we transferred, um, this figure is in pounds, so roughly 12 and a half billion worth of, for, of, of currency that, that went through our, our organization. Um, our footprint looks like this. Um, so the offices in Portugal, Spain, the United Kingdom, um, from the east to the west, we've got offices. We do have a follow the sun model. So for example, if you were in Australia and you needed to speak to someone, the Australian office wasn't open, you know, we can go ahead and field that here stateside. And as the globe turns, we have a follow the sun model. Currencies don't stop, people need payments. So we, we, keep, we keep things going uh, with, uh, with, with all the various time zones. So our customer profile, who comes to us and, and really why do they come to us? Um, people that are buying and selling property abroad uh, is, a, is a very big vertical or a big part of, of, of what we do. Uh, a lot of it's involved with immigration as well. Our customers and clients, they have overseas investments uh, and or they're looking to make overseas investments. They're typically involved with some kind of luxury pur uh, purchase as well. Uh, we do service a lot uh, in, in, the, in the boat, in the uh, nautical yacht industry quite a bit, um, which is a big part here in Miami. Um, we do get involved also with uh, small and medium enterprises that do come to us for, uh, they want guidance on uh, their foreign exchange, uh, either foreign receivables or foreign payables. They come to us and, and we help them with that and any of the risk management that goes, uh, goes along with that. So historically, Euro, US dollar, two major headlines made news last year. Um, one of, of which was that the euro hit a 20-year low against the U.S. dollar. Um, and you can go ahead and see that 2007 seven is where this starts. So you're looking at a good, a, a good portion of time. So towards the uh, end of 2022, we had these two events take place, a 20-year low against the U.S. dollar, and euro hit parity with the U.S. dollar. It actually went beneath parity. Uh, for for a, a little bit of time. What does that mean? The euro, the US dollar was one to one, or the dollar was actually stronger than the euro for uh, for a couple weeks, actually, uh, during the latter part of um, September of, uh, of 2022. When you look at it from a longer term perspective, um, on some of these levels here, let's just say 2008 to 2009, you know, 155 is where the euro was to the dollar, to what, uh, if you were to look at uh, you know, 2011, 2012, some of the higher levels, some of the mid 140s. So when you break it down into context historically, you're looking at 30, 40, perhaps 50% discounts on where the euro was against the US dollar, which is fantastic for American customers whose base currency is US dollars that are looking to deploy capital into the eurozone. So you can see, this overall trend that has been taking place. And what we're forecasting is for that trend to somewhat continue. On this, on this next slide, it, it, you, can, you can kind of see it here and it'll, it'll illustrate it a little bit further. This is the US dollar index. If you're an American investor, you typically hold dollars. And this is showing from 2021, really the first ones out of the gate in terms of raising interest rates, beginning to fight inflation after a bunch of denial about inflation, the US dollar really started to take off. And 
what this is measuring is the US dollar against a basket of currencies. It's measuring it against the euro, the pound, the Canadian dollar, the Australian dollar, uh, basically your G12 currencies, all up against the US dollar in this particular chart. And it really shows the strength that the dollar has taken recently. Um, there has been a bit of a pullback here. What we are forecasting is for this trend to continue. It may not take out some of the higher levels that it had prior, but for this trend to continue or at least stay elevated. What does that mean in terms of euros? Uh, you will be enjoying fantastic entry levels on purchasing euros for any of these projects. Um, so it's, it's, it is great news. So the benefits of a company like, utilizing a company like Currencies Direct, what customers are after, our organization and the entire sector was really built out of customers wanting more from their banks, wanting different foreign exchange tools and being able to, to apply them and, and, and get exposure to them. Um, so customers that, uh, are, that are with us, the benefits that they're seeking and that they're getting are superior rates of exchange and exchange rates that are transparent. Quite often it's difficult to actually get a foreign exchange quote from a, a US bank. A lot of times you don't know what the actual exchange rate was until after you've already sent, sent the funds. Um, we'll go into a price comparison next with what US banks and some of them are offering, um, but superior rates is, a, is, a, is one main reason that, that customers, uh, that why it's recommended to, to use a foreign exchange provider for that. Tailored foreign exchange and payments, speed and efficiency, um, enha enhanced beneficiary screening and validation. We deal with customers quite often who have never sent an international transfer ever in their life and they're just about to send half a million dollars across the world. They're looking at banking details that they've never seen before in different formats. We can go ahead and help them out with that, do enhanced beneficiary screening just to make sure all the information is correct so no, no transfers go, go awry. Again, something that, that banks don't offer. We'll ensure that full amounts are received by beneficiaries. What that means is that if you, let's just say, need 400,000 euros to be sent and actually hit a lawyer's account or a notaire or wherever funds would need to go, that the full amount shows up, that it's not short 50 euros or 100 euros or there, it's been clipped along the way by different intermediaries. So we'll ensure that full amounts are, are received by beneficiaries. We do have expert guidance. We speak to cons uh, clients constantly that are looking to navigate the foreign exchange market and we can give an expert uh, perspective on that. Um, and again, tools that, that uh, for foreign exchange that, that banks don't simply, simply offer. So here's an exchange rate comparison, what I was speaking about. For this particular exercise, we're going to utilize the interbank rate of 1.0625. And just to give an example, that's kind of where the rate was taking out this morning. Now we're looking at 105.90. So some of the moves, and that was at this morning's meeting, um, where this rate was a little was 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 close to where to where um, to, to to where the rate was. Now the interbank interbank rate is a little bit lower, but that's the rate that you'll see on CNBC, on Bloomberg. If you were to turn on any financial media news, the interbank rate is what would be, what would be you would see on uh, as, as, as the quote. Customers and clients, retail customers, don't get that rate. That is the rate that these banks, companies like Currencies Direct, are buying and selling at to each other. So what happens is they all apply their margin on top of that, and so you would be looking at a rate roughly around 106.86 if you were to utilize Currencies Direct or a foreign exchange provider. Um, and compared to some of the major, these are the big investment banks or money center banks here in the States, um, the savings is usually about three to 4% um, when, when transferring funds. So when you're talking about trying to achieve 300,000 euros, um, as coming up with Bank of America, you'd be saving $9,150 by utilizing an FX provider on that one particular transfer as opposed to accepting the rates that a lot of the uh, US banks are are, um, are offering. That can include a host of other banks on there. I just put the three major ones um, just for those, for, for, for an illustration purpose. So how does it all work? It's quite simple to take advantage of the exchange rates. You can create an account, 
It's, it's simple, it's a digital online journey to be able to do so. You don't need to fund the account, it can just sit with no funds in it until you're ready to use it. The, you can simply secure a great rate with us over the telephone. We do have a state-of-the-art online platform and app should you wish to use that and, and kind of self-serve. We have customers that love to self-serve. We have a lot of clients that want to speak to us for, before every single transaction, all of which is fine. Uh, and you simply make your transfer. Let us know where you need the funds to go and we'll go ahead and send the transfer for you. Um, and it is, it is that simple. Ethics tools that are available to you. This is where it really shows where, apart from the cost savings of the actual rates of exchange that you get, um, these are other, other tools that we can use to tailor something that you might be looking for. And I can give a few examples here. Um, so for example, currency wallets or multi-currency accounts, um, we do have those. A lot of customers lately that have been getting involved in Portugal or are in need of, of purchasing euros have been taking advantage of these, of all of these, but in particular, um, the multi-currency account. What does that mean? It means that you can actually purchase euros and hold them into a euro account, an account that's in your name, and you don't need to use them as of yet if you wish. We can hang on to them for a later date if you need them sent down the road and you know a couple months from now or you can stockpile some euros because you know you're planning on getting involved with something that requires euros we can go ahead and hold on to those for you in an account and it's not just euros with these particular and that question came earlier today from another gentleman uh, it's multi-currency accounts and it can hold up to 32 different currencies things that aren't offered here stateside from from banks um, an interesting one was this morning, so we do have a forward, we do offer forward contracts as well. And what a forward contract is, is you can lock into an exchange rate for a period of time, all the way up to two years. There's a gentleman this morning who is looking at purchasing property in Portugal. He's also um, looking at getting involved in a few other areas. He has two properties on the market here in Miami, a uh, very sizable amount of, of proceeds that will be received. He wants to take advantage of the exchange rate today, but he doesn't have the money. The properties are still on the market and they haven't sold yet. With a forward contract, he would be able to take advantage of the rate today for a future payment date of when he would need to settle and, and uh, actually have the dollars available to complete the transaction. Once the dollars are available, he'll go ahead and send those to his currency's direct account and we can go ahead and release the euros wherever he would need to. So he's taking advantage of the actual exchange rate today as opposed to waiting for the properties to sell and not knowing what the exchange rate is going to do at that time. So it's a good way to, to hedge or manage any type of risk. And then market orders or limit orders. If there's a rate that you would want to achieve, customers will come to us and say, Brian, I, I want to transact when the rate is 102. Let's go ahead and put an order in there. And when that rate is available, it could be in the middle of the night. It seems to always happen that way when you're not watching and the rate does this. Uh, there's a spike in the rate or a drop in the rate, you can capture it with those limit orders. Um, it's a good way to budget as well. We, if there's a certain amount, a certain US dollar amount that you want to utilize, we can figure out which rate would be the best rate for you to achieve a certain amount of euros that you would need for a particular project or whatnot. So all of these are customizable. They've got a lot of different uh, ways to be used and we can help you if that's something that you're interested in. Um, but just by asking a few questions and we can make some recommendations um, for you. So key takeaways for you guys, the dollar is, it is at a very, very good level to purchase euros. Uh, historically speaking, we're looking at it, it could get a touch better. Um, so I'd definitely be on the watch for that. Avoid using banks to make transfers. Um, utilize a foreign exchange company. Feel free to, to reach out to us. We're happy to help with that. Uh, Pre-purchase euros when possible to take advantage of, of current exchange rates for future deployment uh, and uh, for future use in, in, in any of the projects. So we do also have another organization, um, a very, very strong organization, uh, Black Tower Financial Management. Um, they'll be around, they are involved with financial planning for U.S. non-residents. Uh, retirement planning as well for U.S. non-residents, cross-border tax planning, things of that nature. Um, 
things with your US investments, your 401ks, your IRAs, your pensions, your government pensions, if you have one, a business pension, things of that nature, how to kind of manage that, and uh, if you have a new life in a different country. Oh, yes, that's Taylor Sattler. That's who you want to speak to about that. And uh, the gentleman next to him is Gavin as well. He's shy, he doesn't want to stand up. But, but, uh, but yeah, great firm. And yeah, that's, that's all I have. Um, if you want to, if you don't have time today to speak, I'll be here for the duration. Any questions that you may have, that QR code, if you, if you can plug in your details there, it will hit my desk. I can follow up with you, give you a phone call, et cetera. Um, but yeah, if anyone has any questions, do we have time for questions? Yeah, are there any questions at all at this stage? Yes. The dollar is going to strengthen against the euro. That's what we're anticipating. And it actually, from earlier today, has taken a bit of place. Uh, the, the dollar has has strengthened against against the euro. We are we're not really forecasting some of the levels we saw beneath parity, but there's a good chance of the lower 101s, 102s, things like that, um, and that could be in short order. Um, next few weeks, perhaps. So it'd be a good time if to perhaps if if you don't have a, a concrete project lined up, or you're you're anticipating that you may, maybe a good time to um, you know, purchase euros for for some use at a, a, at a future future date. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, and I'll be around if there are any questions. Thank you. Okay, uh, our next uh, sponsor is uh, Brightman Group, and hello. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> so my name is Ann Brightman. I am from the Brighton Group Real Estate Company. I'm the last person to speak to you this evening, so I will try to keep it short. Um, I am a native Texan, which you all may be able to tell from my accent already. But um, I am here today to actually share with you all my experience as an American moving to Portugal. And I can honestly say that it was one of the best decisions of my entire life. And that what I've been able to do in a short period of time, six years since I moved there, uh, to build a business, a successful business, an award-winning real estate agency, uh, is something that I don't feel like I ever would have been able to do in any of the other places that I have lived in. And I'm here to tell you, Portugal is a great place to do business. And not only that, and maybe more importantly, Portugal is just a great place to live. And I wake up every morning and I'm so thankful that I am in that country for, for a number of reasons. But I'm going to tell you all a little bit about my journey, just a little bit, because afterwards, if you wanna come upstairs to the breakout room, there's you can pick up a magazine that'll tell you the whole story about how this was done. But uh, my story really begins uh, in Barcelona in Spain, and uh, I have been in real estate in both Brazil and the U.S. before moving to, um, before moving to Barcelona, but um, my, uh, uh, what really got me, and I believe this was in, this was in 2016, was that coming to Europe was such a different experience for me. It was something really unique as an American moving over and actually experiencing the culture and the lifestyle and that the proximity that you had to all these amazing countries that were only a few hours away. So we la I, my partner and I were thinking about settling in Spain and uh, we actually 
I started investigating that and we found out that tax-wise, it absolutely wasn't going to make sense. And uh, in addition to that, actually, I spoke Spanish. I do speak Spanish, but I didn't realize until I went to Spain that I don't speak that Spanish. So communication was a little bit of a complication. But along the way, even our own lawyer started telling us, you need to go check out Portugal. You should find out about the tax situation in Portugal. Go check it out. So we planned an exploratory trip. And we were going to go, we did go to Lisbon, Porto, and Cascais. And when we got to Cascais, we felt like we had come home. Portugal, the whole country, is an amazing country. There's so much to offer. It's a really small country, 10 million people, but it's incredibly diverse. And there's so much to offer and so much to explore. And uh, so when we went to Cascais, we found what we were personally looking for. And uh, what was that? It was a warm and welcoming community. It was, I speak Portuguese, but my partner does not. So it was really important to him that we find a place that he was going to be able to communicate in and settle in easily. And uh, there's a very big expat community in major, at major urban centers throughout Portugal, and it's easy for foreigners to settle in. It's easy to make friends because people are coming from all over. And it's amazing the attitude and the mindset that they come with. It's so open and so, so welcoming and so easy to fit in to find your, to find your tribe. So we loved it, and uh, we actually, you know, both my partner and I are savvy investors. I'm in real estate, right? I have a real estate company. <laughs> but we felt so in love with this country that within a span of 10 days, we actually decided we were going to move there, and uh, we bought a house. So... That was really a crazy decision when I look back on it. And I kind of wonder about what our reasoning was. It was suspended because the country had, it's like it cast a spell over us. So we, um, we 